Guys, today we're talking about competitions. It feels so long since we talked about actual competitions and not just drama or criminal cases or just people bashing each other on the internet. Even though I still am mainly a drama channel and more of the vibe rather than anything technical, I am very excited to talk about two competitions. Well, a competition and a half. We're talking about the Autumn Classic and not technically a competition, but definitely it's a competition. The showcase that is Russian test skates. Yes, the people are asking for it and I shall deliver. Let's start first with the Autumn Classic. The Autumn Classic could essentially also be a test case because it's a very small competition, at least in my head, that is mainly used to showcase your performance, your program to the world. And a lot of notable names were here and I'm excited to start covering them. For the men's, number one, should not surprise you, it is the one, the only, the American superstar, truly the only one right now that is still competitive, Ilya Malinin. Ilya Malinin has come to the season with new energy and I freaking like it. His short program is definitely my favorite of the two. It is undoubtedly an improvement because he's performing, he's trying, both in the short and the free I saw him, really trying to put out his artistic side. And for the short, maybe it's the Latin music that's working on me, but I like it. I think he added a little flair to every movement and it's not that he's actually doing amazingly, he's not Shoma Uno, but he's trying and you can see it. Like the opening, he was giving face. He never gives face. <laughs> and he was somewhat succeeding compared to his past performances and trying to be a showman. Also, I think that the short program needs a little bit of growth from his hair. I think he needs to let his hair grow out so that he can also showcase the passion through his look. His look needs a little bit of quaffing so that he can show that Latin melt the ice passion. But besides that, I am very, very happy for him and proud of him. And also he looks so happy at the end of a short performance and his dad and him are just so cute. Like you could tell it's definitely like the upswing they were looking for coming into the season. And for for his free, I also have good comments because I love his costume. I feel like it's the most he's ever given to me fashion wise, but the program itself, I think is something I'm gonna have to grow to love because although I love that he's throwing himself into the artistic side and you can see him in the movement, like giving it time, giving it, like I can see him thinking through the steps, like, okay, here I'm gonna give it my all. I still don't like the program itself. Like the music is not my vibe and it's just the aesthetic, this is not my cup of tea. But even though his artistic skills are not like a Shoma Uno, I can see him trying. And that's the problem, is that I cannot get lost in his movement. Therefore, I'm going to have to learn to grow to love the program throughout the season. I think the more he gives it, the more I'm going to give it in terms of liking it and loving it throughout the season. But for sure, this is an upswing. This is a strong showing, a strong start. And you could tell that he knew that, not only because he's walking away with the gold, but because he was happy at the end of both performances with what he was giving. And like, even in the free, he was throwing in their movements that were like for the crowd. Like he threw in a crazy jump in there that the crowd just lost their minds to. Like he's trying to be a stage performer, not just, you know, the jump whiz, the American rocket, the Trusova of America. He's trying to give us more, which is what Nathan also had to learn to do. So seeing him actually pivot this into his career is giving me that Nathan vibe that we were all so happy when Nathan started doing it. You see what I mean? Like I feel like he's following the footsteps of the greats behind him and I think he's doing it. He's and going in the right direction and essentially I'm just excited to see what he's gonna do this season. Side note, did the music of the free remind anyone else of the opening of White Lotus or was that just me? I was like, I feel like this is like the White Lotus opening, but maybe I'm wrong. In second place, we have surprise Frenchman, Kevin Amos. Talk about artistics. First of all, his hair. Now this is the length that I want for Ilya Malinin because here he looks, this length of his hair, this look that he's given us, he looks like a beautiful like Renaissance fresco boy that used to model for like Michael Angelo or something. And you know what? The vibe, the look is matching what I think he's trying to give us aesthetic wise in his performances. It fits it. It fits the vibe pretty good. And as per usual, his movement, his artistic interpretation was just beautiful. But unfortunately, as per usual, his jumps were a weak point. They were struggle city. We were on the struggle bus into struggle city with these jumps. And although he managed to kind of pull it together in the free, like he was stable enough to get second place, the, the problem with Kevin Amos is that he's not a young skater. This is a consistent pattern. I've seen where he's gone and it's usually Struggle City in the Struggle Bus. <laughs> and I just, it, it worries me. It makes me nervous. It doesn't make me excited to see what he's got for the rest of the season, even though I think he's an exciting skater. It makes me nervous that we're still in these unstable times with him because his jumps will always and have always been a weak point for him. But like I said, he did kind of pull it together in the free and he managed to be stable enough to walk away with second 
in place. And it's just frustrating because like when he's good, he's great. But when he's bad, he just completely falls apart. And here he was imperfect, but he didn't fall apart, which gives me a little bit of hope. Because if he can just be mediocre the rest of the season, if he can just kind of be stable, even if it's not in a perfect way, I think that would be the best for him. Because having that up and down and up and down is, is too much. And what gives me hope is that he managed to pull it together in the end. Although this is a small competition with competitors like Shoma Un or any of the Japanese men, he would definitely not even podium at all. Like not even have a chance to podium. So as long as he just kind of stays consistent in some kind of way, I am happy. Now, regarding his actual program, regarding the free specifically, I'm only gonna say this once. If I never hear Bolero again, it will be too soon. Why are we still doing Bolero? Stay away from Bolero. No more Bolero. Please, someone release me from the Bolero curse. And like the red gloves too? Is it an homage to Camila Valieva who also had the red bottom gloves when she did Bolero? Like the boy is cursing himself by doing this music. No one who's ever done Bolero has come out alive. And you're also doing the red gloves. Boy, that is red blood <laughs> that you got on your hands. But here's the worst part. This is my favorite of his programs. Between this and the short, I like this one better. Even though we have Bolero, in spite of Bolero, because the choreography plus his costume are actually really good. This is the most intricate, like super interesting choreography I've ever seen him do. And he does some crazy shit usually in his programs. Like he's known for thinking outside the box and being super artistic. And you're always entertained with him, whether it is because you're nervous for him falling or because he's just showcasing some insane moves that you don't see anywhere else. He's very unique in his style and his movements throughout this bolero are some of my favorite he's ever done, but it's on top of bolero. So I don't know. <laughs> in the end, it doesn't matter what I think because he ended up walking away with second place, which was the main goal of every male at this competition was just getting behind Ilya Malinin, who was obviously going to take the gold. And he did that. He did just that. So I'm just hoping for some kind of stability from Kevin Amos and get bolero out of my face. But he's kind of doing it well. Anyways, in third place, we have Steven Gogolev, who I'm going to be completely honest. I've heard this name before, but I'm not fully invested, nor do I fully know his journey. All I have to say to this man is congrats and also get a haircut. I'm cheering for you, but you need a haircut. <laughs> Honorable mention though, someone who I'm very emotionally attached to is even though he ended up in 11th place, Donovan Carrillo, our Mexican Latin superstar, he did not do great. <laughs> the biggest thing for him at this competition is that he has a new coach. I believe he left Mexico actually to train with this new coach and that's always a hard thing. We know that when you change camps, change coaches to kind of know if this transition is even going to be successful or not, it takes about two and a half competitions for us to see is this sticking, is this not the first two competitions kind of disregard because everything is different, the coaching is different, the technicality is different and that being said still this was a really bad outing for Donovan especially a first outing with his new coach and like I said he's transitioning into a new coach so I'll give him some grace but it is please disregard the hammering in the background. It's New York City and people don't give a single fuck about me recording figure skating videos. Anyways I'm giving him grace. I know he's going into a different style of coaching but it is very concerning that he could barely land a single jump. I'm not even overstating this. I'm not exaggerating. He could barely land a jump in the short. In the free kind of did better, but still it was, we were, we were, arri we had arrived in Struggle City when it came to Donovan. We were on our way with the other two, but we were here with Donovan. The good thing is that what is always on his side is his stage presence. He has charisma to spare. Like, do you know how charismatic and confident you have to be to perform season long? I'm bringing sexy back, <laughs> let alone how confident you have to be to know that you're going to be falling most of the time to the song I'm bringing sexy back like just for him and the fact that I love him so much I'm gonna put aside my Justin Timberlake hate and cheer for him and want him to nail this performance that being said but that is because I am emotionally attached to him so I'll do it his programs are both actually really interesting like his movement is always fun and interesting and I really can't wait for the day that he performs them clean or even somewhat clean I just want him to land jumps because everything else he's got down and to be completely honest because he has this charisma this crazy story and he comes from Mexico and is making history being like the only Mexican skater in like 50 years as long as he can make it to the next Olympics and he shines in interviews just as much as he shines on the ice he will become a star his star will continue to grow I can see him having an Adam Rippon kind of shot to fame moment in the next Olympics if he does even decently fine so he just needs to focus on getting to the next Olympics and then working his magic so I'm cheering for you Donovan let's get it together for the ladies Kauri was truly the only woman there that I was interested in or was even notable to comment on. So I'm only gonna comment on Kauri. Kauri completely
completely owned last season. She was the it girl of the moment and therefore I believe had the biggest expectations coming into this season because everybody's looking at her like, can she do that again? And the answer is, uh, really? Maybe? But these programs are making it hard. For the short, I love the braid and the dress. Honestly, the Japanese ladies are never disappointed when it comes to presentation, but the short program, it was given soft girl vibes, but it was not as enthralling or as memorable as her Janet Jackson short, which was really the moment where she became kind of like the moment. It was given Disney Princess in a good way, and I thought her jumps were solid, so it seemed to be like a good short, especially because it was a good performance this early in the season. Like she seems stable, she seems good physically, but the short just felt like, okay, let's see what she has for the free. And here is the problem. I think the free is way too similar to the short because I know it was meant to be like a dark version of the short, like a hello big spender instead of Disney Princess, but it still felt way too similar. Like it took way too long to have the switch up and the costume was basically the same vibes, but like in black and like the packaging, it just felt way too safe for Kaori, who is known for pushing boundaries and changing the game. So I felt disappointed, especially given last season, her just dominating the ladies in the absence of the Russians, of course. So I wanted her to take like a different route, like showcase to me that charisma and star power that you gave us last season. And instead I got a sassier, moodier, longer version of the short. Not to mention that the song is completely overdone, especially in skating. So I was kind of disappointed with Gaudi overall because it was like an okay program and like a disappointing program. But still her performance of both programs was good. Like she seems to be in a really good place for this early part of the season. Her jumps were solid, her skating was solid. She maybe was a little bit slow, but it's really early. So it's nothing to like get worried about. She didn't seem too happy at the end of both performances, but still, again, it doesn't matter what I think because she walked away with first. Overall, I agree that she had a great start to this season. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, let's talk about Russian test skates. First of all, what in the earth for a voiceover to come on and say like, don't go anywhere. Next up is the 2007 Disney Channel games. Like, <laughs> it was truly good in that. Regardless, let's get into it. First, let's talk about the woman of the hour in Russia, Kamila Valieva. The angles and every single one of these programs, I was like, what are these movie angles? Like, they were just like, bam, side profile, bam, front profile, bam, zoom in, zoom out. <laughs> like, they said flair. Russia always gives it a little bit of flair. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like it. I appreciate it. And in my timeline, there was talk of her like not doing amazing, but to me, what I saw, she did great. Like, she had a little wobble in front of the judges, but she like played it off and was cute about it. Like, the short was very sassy, and I think it showcased a little bit more of her personality that we have yet ever to see. And it makes Camila even more interesting to me as a person because we've always just seen her as first like the chosen one, then like the girl who's gonna win the Olympics, then the freaking scandal overtook her entire personality. She even made a program about it. She said, I am that. I am the girl who has been wronged, you know, from her point of view. But now she was like, F it, like I'm just gonna have fun and do this like sassy program in a red dress because it's icy red or whatever. And I kind of liked it. It felt like a program that Elena Kostornaya would have done if she was still a single skater because she was known to be, or at least presented to us as being the sassy one, the, the edgy one, the one who would do the sultry, like more edgy programs. I never known Camila to be that way. And she genuinely looked like she was having fun. So it kind of made her more likable to me. However, for Camila Malieva, her programs might as well all be show programs because I don't know if we'll ever even see her compete again after the trial, whether in Russia or it's not like it counts for anything anyways. But after the trial, everything might change. So I think they just gave her two programs that were meant to be show programs just to like rile up the crowd. And it worked. I feel like after the trial, it's giving, it's feeling like Camila is going to be the sacrificial lamb offered up by Team Tutberitze and Russia in order for Russia to get back into international competitions under a neutral flag like has been done in other sports like tennis and yeah I feel like this trial is just gonna chew her up and the fact that she was having so much fun like made me feel made me like her more I, I want her to be okay like this kid has been put through the ringer because the adults around her failed her by putting her in a situation where she was being given all these heart medications which they obviously knew were banned and then letting her get caught and then acting like they didn't know what happened letting her basically take all the heat for it I want her to have fun so seeing her having fun especially in the short just made me be like oh Camila 
<laughs> you sweet child, I hope you're okay. Um, but I do think that she's gonna be offered up like in an instant. If there's even a chance that giving Camila suspension for life, both in Russia and internationally, will get the rest of them in international competitions, they wouldn't even think about it. They'd give her up like that. Now her free. <laughs> we need to talk about it because it did feel just a little bit icky, a little bit dicey because she was obviously referencing Wakanda. Her outfit was giving Wakanda the hand movement. I mean, her music choice. It was a Wakanda like showcase essentially. And although I don't think it is a cancelable offense, especially not in Russia, I do think let's just say that if she was an American skater in a different universe, she would have definitely had to give a statement or a good morning America or a notes app apology or explanation on Instagram because Twitter might have eaten her up for doing the Wakanda Forever program while not being black. I don't know. That's just the energy that the world is giving. But in Russia, of course, it doesn't matter. Who cares? I just know that the USA girlies in Twitter would not have let it go. But the free also kind of felt like a show program that was extremely entertaining, extremely like fast paced, and her skill is still there. I, I think that she truly is the perfect combination of performer, artistic, and like technicality. And I know that she's in Russia, so who knows, <laughs> you know, what might be enhancing those qualities. But she truly is a talented figure skater and that's why it makes it so so annoying and frustrating that the world will never the rest of the world will never see her that way because she will always be that girl who was caught doping during the 2022 olympic that's just her tag for the rest of her life and she's always gonna have to reference it outside of russia but also even in russia and it's just because the adults around her failed to protect her so overall she will always be her olympic scandal it might not be a scapegoat for russia to return back to the olympics however i am happy that she looks really happy and both her programs are essentially show programs to rile up the crowd she still has a skill there. I don't know if that's because she's getting some help, but I truly believe she is intrinsically talented and it just sucks because she could give so much to the world of figure skating internationally, but she might never be able to do so because the trial is coming up. She got caught doping, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know. Camila, as the person, I'm cheering for and hoping she's just happy and healthy. Camila, the skater, so many things are going on. Let's talk now about the other star of the show, Aliona Costornaya. First of all, Aliona Kosonaya plus her husband, because that's how we're gonna talk about it. Aliona Kosonaya and her husband, that is essentially the team. She's the star, he's the stem. <laughs> he's just there to hold up the flower. She looked beautiful. Oh my God, she looked beautiful. And we know that Aliona Kosonaya is a stunning girl to look at, but she looked gorgeous. I do think the green is a bit muted, but the color still looks gorgeous on her. And I don't even care that the husband looked basic. He's there to be basic. He's there to just, you know, make her shine. And in Paris, that's kind of the point. Make the girl shine. If she's succeeding, you're also succeeding. Then in the free program, again, she looks gorgeous, but she's obviously doing the heavy lifting for both the team in terms of looks. <laughs> not that he's ugly, but you know what I mean, like in terms of outfits. However, I'm not gonna lie, this Hunger Games theme, I get why they're in all black, but I need a little bit more. I needed just a little bit more. And the Hunger Games theme took me completely by surprise. Like I did not think it was a Hunger Games inspired thing. And all of a sudden there's like, may the odds be ever in your favor. <laughs> Whichever spoken word, they chose to put in there. That was wild. I, I had to go like, what is happening? Like, I did not see it coming. But you know what? I was naive because Aina Kostornaya, the queen, Miss Little Devil 03, has always worked best under a theme. And it's only natural that she did Hunger Games since she already did Twilight in her youth during her heyday. And if I'm talking about just their skating, honestly, their skill level surprised me. Like, they did really good for their first showing. I was shocked. Like, they did actually really well. Don't get me wrong, they're still nowhere near the top pair skaters in Russia, they are still doing kind of basic movements compared to them. They could be maybe top 10 in the country if they're lucky, but I think that's what they're striving for. Like, I just think she wants to stay in the ice. She wants to be in the middle of everything. She wants to showcase that she can still, you know, be competitive. And I think she can. I just don't think that she can podium. Maybe in Russia right now, the pair's field is a little bit scarce and she can get like a pewter here and there, you know, like a fourth place. But I really don't see her ever getting the gold or the second or the bronze unless somebody else really f's up because their skill level plus the lack of time that they've been working together is just working against them even then i cheer for them i'm very very excited that they're on the ice it is fascinating to me how quickly they got married and the fact that they're actually like I, it still takes me a little bit of time to be like that's how you with her husband on the ice her husband she really said we're, we're doing pairs and we're doing it to the max to the nth degree <laughs> but their prospects are truly just hopeful 
fully being top 10. Like their skill level is just not there yet. They cannot compete with the big boys and they made continuous mistakes and jumps. Like not just her, but he, like he was not nailing it. I thought he was like a, a Paris partner before. I guess he just wasn't one of the best ones. But like I said, I'm happy. They bring drama, they bring entertainment and just their mere presence. And overall, I just describe it as pleasantly surprised. I was excited to see her and overall, both the short and the free, I was pleasantly surprised with the fact that it wasn't a complete shit show. I will say this, the weird handshaking at the end of the free was like, excuse me, people, <laughs> you guys are married. Like maybe it's an inside joke of them being a couple, but like for being a married couple, you both lack chemistry. Like you need to work on that. I can't believe I'm saying this for being a real life couple, but you're missing the flame there that should be in any Paris or Ice Dance couple. So work on that. Besides that, cheering for you. Love you guys. I mean, Costornaya. And hopefully they actually continue to perform. And who knows, maybe they'll prove me wrong in podium someday. Moving on, we have Tuktemisheva, the Empress. 26 and still going strong. Her outfit was not great, but, <laughs> and I don't know how I feel about her blonde highlights, but she's an adult. Often the only adult for single skating in the ladies. And therefore she can do whatever she wants with her hair. I don't have much to say about Costernaya since she's truly not really a competitor for the podium anymore because there's just so many young girls skating at such a high level in Russia. But I'm just proud of the fact that she's still around to show that adults can truly skate like it's physically possible. And not every female single skater has to retire by 18. Like the title that she has as the Empress takes a whole new meaning when you realize that she quite literally is the only evidence in Russia right now for women single skating that an adult body of a woman can actually continue to skate at a high level. I feel like Russians forget that that's even possible, but it is feasible, it is possible, it is doable if you train correctly. And I think that's just something that we're probably gonna lose as soon as Tukdemisheva retires because everybody else has adopted the Tutberitse method, the Tutberitse way. Even Plushenko or like Fetchenko, who we're gonna talk about later. Like all these skaters are just using the Tutberitse way where they just burn out these young little girls so quickly. But Tukdemisheva is still out here going strong because she came from Professor Mission. And the moment that Professor Mission goes away, we're gonna lose that. So the Empress is being the Empress by her mere presence. Moving on, guys. Maya Kromik is alive. Not only is she alive, but she's at test skates. Like Daria Uzoshova, Alexandra Truzova, and our Olympic champion Anna Sherbakova did not make it. But Maya Kromik is here and pushing at Russian test skates 2023. Like if you had told me pre-Olympic season, I would not have believed you. Well, maybe I would have said I'm disappointed and I'm inclined to believe you given the Tutberitsa history. But regardless, I would have been like, no, that's not, that can't be true. But it's true. However, I thought Maya would also fall with them. So imagine my surprise when I see her skate onto the ice in the warm-up. That being said, she did struggle. But she's still standing. And in the world of Team Tutberitsa, believe me when I say that that counts for something. Her performances were all right. She struggled, but she's still standing. And that is a win in and of itself. Kudos to you, Maya Kromik, the one who can. She's kind of rivaling the Sherb's power will, I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> like, she's still here. I can't believe it. Moving on, though, we have Sofia Akatieva. To me, one of the saddest figures of Team Tupritza right now. She is the heir, the next big thing. Thing that never was. I feel like the fact that the Russians are in limbo due to being banned from international competitions also puts Sofia Katieva's career and her ascent as the new heir in limbo because she was the chosen one very publicly. Like the PR was there when she was doing interviews talking about Camila Vareva's influence. Like the program that they were giving her was very much like this is the next one. This is the new as a Terry it girl. But that era never came because as Camila Vareva's scandal took the world by storm, so did her popularity in Russia. She skyrocketed from just a national skater to national symbol of Russian pride, especially with the freaking war. She became a symbol of Russia nationalism. Camila became more than just a skater. She was a patriotic symbol in the time of war and Sofia Katieva now had to compete against that, against her still because they're all stuck in Russia. And then when Akatieva started having mishaps here and there, her main rival, Adelia Petrov, 
Rosier also started to do better than her during Katieva's mishaps. So now I feel like nobody really talks about Katieva anymore. And it doesn't help that she has been plagued with injury ever since those mistakes. Skating only the short at this Russian test skate. It was confirmed that she skated the short with an injury and then later had to withdraw from the free completely. Sadly, I feel like Katieva's career is fading into the background. And even for Team Tudberitza themselves, like the program that they give her is that of a whatever skater. Tudberitza or the Team Tudberitza continue to give her these forgettable programs of just classic Russian war horses. And now Akatieva, I feel like it's just a background character to the Camila Valieva show and the Alina Kostornaya show and maybe even the Adelia Petrosian show. Akatieva has had one of the biggest downturns. She's starting to transition from being the next big thing, you know, the Camila Valieva storyline to the forgettable one. She's starting to become the Darius Soshova of her generation and it's really sad to see. <sighs> but yeah, that's really all I have to say. Her her short was alright and I don't even th think I can comment on it because she was skating with an injury and then she withdrew so I can't really judge her because she was pushing through moving on to the woman of the hour in a bad way the one that had most of the headlines in the recent weeks Alina Gorbachova Alina if you don't remember was the girl who went missing and then was later found sleeping in a movie theater after spending the night in the residential staircase because she had a domestic fight with her coach who she had lived with since she was nine years old and then her mom went on vacation afterwards that still baffles me well Alina was was there with her coach, the coach of the hour, and they seemed to be walking with their head held high. Like they definitely walked in there with something to prove, not only with Alina's skating level, but with her passion for skating. And not just like her skating, but their coach student relationship. Like I feel like everybody was just look at them with hawk eyes. A lot of attention on them for sure. And I just hope that Alina's healthy. That being said, I was not a fan of her free program. Like, why is she wearing black tights with a white button down and a giant? giant bedazzled chess piece in the back. I don't care if the theme was Queen's Gambit or some other chess film, you do not put a giant symbol like a freaking logo bedazzled in the back of your shirt or dress. You just don't do that. It is not the move. It has never worked. It has never been good and it will never look good. She had a few fumbles here and there, but overall the program was all right skill-wise and overall I didn't like it. It was not my move. It felt a little bit too intense for this young girl, especially given what she has gone through and what she's most known for now. Like, there was just also a disconnect between the costume too. Like, everything just fell a little bit out of place. Like, the packaging was not it. I don't know who Alina is. I don't know who her character was supposed to be. It was just not good. The short was all right. It felt basic in the nicest way possible. And having her missing story being the thing that she's most known for now kind of took away from my viewing experience of her programs, I'm not gonna lie. And all I can think is just I just hope she figures out what she actually wants to do. Does she want to skate? Does she want to do a different program? Maybe a different costume? Whatever it is, whether it's completely unrelated to figure skating or not, I just hope that she has the autonomy to do that. And I'm wishing her the best. Her free gave me a headache in terms of just what is this? And her short, I honestly already forgot about it. So there's that. Then we have the first Angel of Pushenko, Veronica Zilina. She's still at the Angel of Pushenko and let's just say that the angels ain't flying like <laughs> Plushenko has yet to crack this whole coaching thing and get a true star under his name, under his school. Veronica Julina's short and the dress were forgettable at best and her packaging does nothing, like nothing to tell us who she is. It's the blandest thing you could ever give. It was literally gray. <laughs> like, you, or it was like gray and beige had a baby. You, you couldn't do worse than this in terms of like a dress for a skater who is not well known to the public. Like she's meant to pop, Plushenko. All I know about her is that she has a sister and all I can do is help but wonder where is she? Where is the other Jelena sister? Like that's how we knew her as the Jelena sisters. That's all they're known for. I mean that and their crazy mom. But like I don't know anything about her personality and Plushenko refuses to tell me anything about it with this program. Then we had the free which tells me even less about her because it is a Michael Jackson program and since Jun Hua Cha did Michael Jackson so amazingly which honestly I didn't think it could be done but he did it last season. I would just recommend every 
everyone in figure skating to stay away from it for a few seasons. Like, don't do Michael Jackson right now because you can't help but compare how someone does it good and then how someone does it bad. And to top it all off, she had a really bad outing. Not only did she do Michael Jackson bad in terms of performance, but her jumps were bad. And this poor girl is just getting drowned out in these very bland and bad performances. It's just, it was a disservice. Plushenko is working actively against the skater, in my opinion. Moving on, Adelia Petrosian. What did I just say? Stay away from Michael Jackson in general, because I don't think Michael Jackson is good from skating, but also Jude Watch, I just did it. And this girl just did it. <laughs> Just stay away. I don't know if a Terry was trying to have like a Battle of the Carmens moment with like the exact same music. She's done this before where she just copies somebody else's music, but like it was not giving the same energy. It just felt like, oh my God, we just went through this. Like I just told you this was a bad idea. And now you're telling me you're doing it too. It was, it was not good. I will say though, Petrosian did have a way better outing than Veronica Gelina. And if this was the Battle of the Carmens, a Battle of the Jacksons, which sounds so bad, she would have won because she had better stage presence it was more free and you could tell she was actually enjoying herself and her jumps were way more stable than Jelena's and her costume was I would say is a bit better but it was still not a good move like this program can disappear in my opinion her free was generic but in like a comforting way to me it felt like a nice break from the weird music edits that the Russians had been giving me up to this point for their more contemporary programs and from the over the top camp which I usually enjoy but this generic program I don't know like it just kind of gave me safe space feels maybe it was because it reminded me of a little Zhenya Medvedeva but I liked it don't know how I feel about her dress I feel like it'll grow on me but overall it was a good performance and I think that Adelia Petrosian to me right now is one of her best younger skaters she still has inconsistency problems but that's something that's gonna get better with time and she can outperform in terms terms of personality and performance, the Plushenko skaters, which is, it's something. Speaking of Plushenko skaters, we have last but not least, actually maybe least, actually no, not least, Sofia Muravieva. She did better than I expected, and in my opinion, continues to be Plushenko's most notable skater. However, that says a lot because she did not have a perfect performance, both in the short and the free. And I would say that her music was probably also forgettable and boring. Like it was, I feel like I've heard it before, especially in in Russia where they love to do this like scary moody edits of classic songs and I feel just like if Plushenko just nails down his packaging for skaters and gives them a complete persona on the ice with costume music and just PR something it would just come together so much better and it's ironic this is the thing he's worst at because he's such a big personality himself maybe that's why he thinks it falls completely on the responsibility of the skater to shine and have stage presence and have you know a persona thought up for every program but he's not helping them at all he needs to take that out from himself and show his students how to be a star on the ice how to be larger than life how to play with the crowd those are skills that need to be taught sometimes sometimes you're born with them but sometimes they need to be taught and he doesn't have a single skater that is a showman at heart he doesn't he doesn't have a Kostornaya he doesn't have a Plushenko <laughs> like he doesn't have a little Plushenko that's just gonna go out there and play with the crowd by nature he needs to teach it and her programs were good like I feel like especially during the free I believe the one with the gray outfit I think that's the one where she did well there was a program where she didn't do too well there was a program where she did better I think that Sofia Muravieva is the student that Plushenko needs to invest his time in and invest in giving her better programs and just better showcases of her personality because she is a performer I see it I see glimpses of it but she is just a blank canvas to us still and I think that if she's as consistent as she can be and gives us like an interest interesting, fun program that the audience can just clamp onto, he will have that star skater that he's yearning so hard for because he tried so hard to give that to the Jenna sisters, but they just don't. That Michael Jackson program was not it. Let's say that. That was not it. Sofia Moravieva is his next big thing, but he doesn't know it. Or maybe his next big thing, he still hasn't stolen yet. <laughs> we'll see. And yeah, that was truly Russian test skates. I was essentially Russian test skates. I, I, it feels like a mood point to kind of cover this, but I know that is highly 
requested and it's very entertaining and I would I was gonna watch it anyways but knowing that these people are just not gonna be international competitions it kind of defeats the point but anyways I love the programs I think my favorite programs from the ones I've seen have to be probably mm, I actually did like a lot Camila Villanueva's I See Red and then Donovan Carrillo's Free I actually did like a lot and I can't believe I'm saying this but Kevin Amos's Bolero was good and I'm excited for Ilya's short program like there's a lot of programs here that kind of have me on the edge and the better they do them the more I'm gonna like him like I didn't hate Gaudi short I'm just not in love with it and it was not what I was expecting the more I see them the more I look at them the more they perform I think I'm gonna like them more there's a lot of growers here for me this season and we haven't even seen everybody there's a lot of people I haven't seen I have not seen the second love of my life Amber Glenn I have not seen Isabel Levito like there's a lot of people we haven't seen at all and so far these programs have me excited for the season and that's the main thing let me know which one was your favorite let me know what you guys thought do you completely disagree with me do you half agree with me do you not agree with me at all <laughs> or do you agree with me fully love that for you if you do but i disagree with myself a lot of the time so don't feel <laughs> like you agree with me with everything and yeah as always shout out to katie corina leslie natalia timothy tori and v i might have added a few names in there but regardless i'll talk to you guys later bye bye